Hey guys, welcome to Gaslands TV. Today I'll be doing these uh, two rigs here. They are both from um, Hot Wheel and um, it's going to be a pretty simple and easy build. Nothing too complicated, nothing too crazy. Uh, but uh, still might be a little uh, long video so uh, settle in and uh, let's get to it. So first off we're going to open these things with a drill. I'm going to use a small drill first to get rid of these rivets, then a medium drill, and then I'm going to be using a bigger drill bit. And uh, what you're trying to do here is just remove the metal, the metal excess that's coming out of the rivet uh, so that you could just pull everything open. Uh, you could go slow here, it doesn't have to be like full speed and uh, be careful because uh, I've seen some accidents happen to other people. It hasn't happened to me yet, thank God. But yeah, when you're drilling, just keep your your wits about and uh, stay safe while you're doing it. Now, uh, once you have those off, it's pretty easy to open up the, the bodies of these Hot Wheels. And I'm going to remove this window. I don't think I'm going to be using it. Instead, I'm going to be putting this um, sandpaper, uh, drywall sandpaper that you could find in the, at a hardware store and they have different grits, so it has like nice texture. I, I enjoy using these. Uh, some people use uh, colanders, stuff like that. So whatever, whatever you like, you could put as a window mesh. Then I have this piece of metal here. I also got at the hardware store. I, I don't know what that's called. If anybody knows, uh, please write it in the comment. But uh, it was at a hardware store and there's a, a bunch of little metal bits and stuff that you could buy there. So go take a look. I really like these metal bits. They look like uh, metal pan paneling or whatever. So uh, I'm going to have a coffee here before we start because uh, you're going to need some energy, especially when working on, on rigs. It's a lot of work. Um, I'm gonna stick a 3D printed thing here that my friend gave me. And if uh, if you're interested in ordering stuff from him, let me know. I'll give you his contact. Even this uh, this this mounted turret, he uh, he printed this for me. So uh, yeah, if you're looking for stuff, let me know. And then we have these things here that I like to glue on on wheels. Uh, these you can find at hardware stores as well. I think they're cement screws meant for cement or uh, grout if you want to put something like outdoor between the bricks if you want to hang something. Um, but yeah, they're they're pretty easy to find at any hardware store, and they 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 make pretty sick looking uh, uh, blades. Or you could uh, get these. Uh, halo snaps and uh, they have little spikes coming out of them these you could find at like places that sell sewing stuff maybe even walmart or uh, or online you could find that as well and uh, these things are you know those things that go behind pins when you like a lapel pin or any any type of pin that you want to put on clothes there's always that little thing in the back and um, i found these also at my hardware store I don't know what these are called either but they're pretty cool looking like hubcaps and uh, they're, they're almost the perfect size for for most Hot Wheel uh, tires the big ones the off-road ones and then you could like put these halo snaps on it and make it look uh, pretty gas landy and cheap and easy to find and it's cool because they also have a hole where you could put maybe the tip of a toothpick here. And uh, it looks like a pretty bad uh, side scraping mechanism if you want to rub some paint off the opponent or slash some tires. And uh, here on the side of these I didn't want to remove these tires uh, so I'm just gonna glue them as is I like to spin it to make sure it's centered before the uh, glue hardens 
and uh, you you don't have to do every tire exactly the same just put whatever bits and pieces you have on them and um, I have these spikes I think these were leftovers from some 3d print but if, uh, if you're looking for bigger spikes than toothpicks you could use these bamboo skewers uh, for brochettes and uh, barbecuing and stuff like that it's a dollar fifty and you get a bunch of spikes and uh, the the thing with these is that they're they're hard to cut. Uh, it's bamboo, right? So it's pretty hard stuff. And I think I'm gonna use like four, maybe three, and make like a wall of spikes or some kind of ram or something. Let's see what we could do here. So when you when you break these, they they come off with like fibers and stuff because it's bamboo. But um, could cut off those fibers. And uh, I'm going to use this thing. It kind of looks like barbed wire or like a metallic mesh. And um, what it is, is it's the uh, the wire to hang paintings. And you can find those in like painting hanging kits. And uh, they're pretty easy to cut. These kits come with a, a bunch of things. So if you can find like a painting hanging kit uh, you'll, you'll get a bunch of bits you could use to modify your car and I'm going to use this wire to just go around these these four sp spikes here that looks not bad and maybe I'll shove it there do a little uh, protection for the driver in case they're getting shot at from the back or something Let's see how this stuff actually sticks with glue. Shouldn't be that that hard to stick this. And uh, I'm gonna try with these things. I don't know what else I'm gonna do with these, so I'll probably just add more in the back here. Put the wire around it and glued it here in the back. Uh, looks pretty good. Now you could also use these uh, champagne cork holders or stoppers or protectors. They have a really nice and easy to work with metal. So if ever you're celebrating something and you pop a champagne bottle, keep that. Uh, it even has this cool metal looking thing that you could put uh, if you're making terrain or something. It looks like, a, I don't know, some canister or kind of cover or something I'll see if I could use it maybe on the other rig and uh, for the guns here something super simple I'm just gonna glue some 3d printed stuff on the sides if you're if you don't have 3d printed stuff you could make guns with uh, tie wraps and q-tips uh, but that's how it's kind of gonna look once everything's uh, put together and uh, I'm going to leave the, the bed here open because what I'm planning on doing with this is making it modular. So I'll be able to put any other car that I have that has a gun. And uh, I could put it facing forward, facing backwards. So it's kind of a way to put different uh, guns in the build before uh, playing the game. Everything still spins. I like uh, I like the, the way the engine moves on this particular Hot Wheel truck. It's pretty cool. Now uh, this thing opens up. It's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna maybe turn it into some kind of satellite tower since it's, it opens like that. So I'm probably gonna put a satellite up here. And. Uh, if you guys know any household items that look like miniature satellites, uh, I'd like to hear your comments on that. I've been looking for something and the only thing I could think of is these 3D printed stuff. But if there's a household item that looks like satellite or something that's easy to make, just, um, using these headphones as a little cannon or gun or maybe like an uh, antenna holder or something. Uh, but yeah, if you have some old headsets that you don't use anymore, you could use that. And you could even cut off Q-tips here to make a muzzle and then add it to the tip of the, uh, the earphone. 
it's gonna make a kind of like a gun it's uh it's hard to work with when it's really small like this but yeah it's, it doesn't fit in well it fits a little bit but you're it might fit better in yours so try it out if it doesn't fit you could just uh, use it as is and uh, before gluing i'm going to make sure that it's not hitting the front and uh, that looks pretty good and uh, it could shoot both sides or maybe it's like a turret that shoots shoots on the left shoots on the right could shoot upwards and then when this opens could probably shoot some uh, gyrocopters or stuff like that I'm gonna use this sandpaper again as mesh for some of these windows and I'm gonna use the same items I used before for the uh, tires the uh, halo halo snaps They look really cool with these uh, spikes. And uh, I was planning on putting this inside. And that is the worst tool to be using right now. Um, maybe using a saw would be better. This this is a really bad idea. Right now you're just hoping for one of my fingers to get cut and have blood everywhere. But I was being extremely careful. But yeah, don't use a knife to try to cut these things. Uh, Maybe a, a jewelry saw might work better, but I had to cut it because I wanted it to fit almost perfect in the uh, in the back here. Maybe have it look like a oil container or something holding some kind of liquid. So I'm gonna glue that, and uh, the champagne thing that we saw earlier, I'm gonna stick it up here, and maybe put uh, one of these bolts here. Get our hardware store too. Uh, I like the texture on them. They look pretty good. Could put it in the back here too. And uh, use one of these things that I used us on the hubcaps. Put it on top here. It looks some kind of exhaust or something. I don't know. Just be creative with whatever you have. I have a lot of these bamboo sticks. So I think I'm going to use more. Maybe another four here four five and uh, this is a champagne cork holder again I'm gonna use that just want to test it out see if it works and uh, I mean it, it works really well as as metal if you're looking for metal wiring and I'm gonna have them stick out the window here some kind of side protection and I'm gonna put a metal Piece of metal with a gun coming out of this window. And uh, I'm going to use this Kellogg's gift card that they sent me to make a metal uh, metal armor protective shield in front of the one of the windows. They sent me this card because literally uh, I burnt my mouth with a Pop-Tart. But it wasn't a regular pop tart like most pop tarts have like jam in the middle this one was like liquid right so when it came out of the toaster i waited a bit like you would for pop tarts you don't put them right away in your mouth but like i bit into it and it was just liquid and it squirted and it burned the hell out of my mouth so i called them and i told them guys I got a pop tart that was really like liquidy and it squirted in my mouth and I didn't like that feeling at all you know you know what I mean like that hot burning squirt like pretend you're biting into a cherry tomato and the inside is boiling hot that's what it felt like so they sent me a gift card 50 bucks not bad so it's pretty good and i'm in canada so who knows what i could have got in the states that kind of burn anyways back to the build so uh, if you if you have been paying attention i did a little metal thing here with a little window quick easy and uh gonna have a little maybe a gun sticking out of that window uh, you could use uh two q-tips cut them and you'll have like a double barrel shotgun coming out of here um, I'm going to use 
the tip of this 3D printed gun. Um, getting 3D printed stuff is a luxury. It's not something that's necessary. A lot of the guns and stuff you can make homemade with whatever you find. So uh, I think I'm pretty much. I think I'm gonna put a few little spikes here. These are leftovers from other other things I printed. And uh, you could also use a straw. Straw makes for pretty cool like piping. And uh, I mean this one's really long here. If you cut it in diagonal, it gives it a little exhaust look once it's painted. And uh, I'm going to see... Oh, where did that go? Hope it didn't go in my coffee. No. Uh, put it here in the back. That looks pretty good. But again, before gluing it, I'm going to test and uh, see if I try to open this. The pipe's not going to... Maybe if I... See, see the pipes not uh, not allowing me to open this fully, which I really want to do. Maybe during the game or for pictures and stuff. So you can find a different area if if you uh, if you have a a way of putting it somewhere on your rig. It makes for a pretty nice pipe. But alas, I did not find a spot. Now uh, I primed some of this black, some of it brown. Um, should have only painted this brown and everything else black. I don't know why I did the front brown as well of that train, but once everything's primed, uh, whichever color you want, you could go into silver. I always like starting with the silver and just painting whatever is metallic or whatever should be metal, um, silver, I guess, like these springs here. You could uh, if you have like this kind of texture on your hot wheel if you dry brush a little bit of silver on it it looks pretty good and um, do do all the guns in silver everything that needs to be silver this I did I didn't prime this this came this kind of like sparkly black I really liked it so I'm just gonna make a few of the details on it silver maybe the wiring and some of the bolts and stuff and this, this one has a chain underneath if you don't want to use paint you could also use a sharpie sharpie works pretty well especially if it's a new one you get some a lot of paint at the, the felt tip there and you can do little details quick and easy like door hinges or for example these metal lines here right instead of painting them maybe use a sharpie and done like that took maybe a second or two some of the uh, details underneath the car you could do with a sharpie and uh, once you've done all that you could use a tiny brush with some silver on it and just put a little bit of silver on the edges and that's gonna look like some of the paint was chipped not too much, just very little. Could be subtle, unless you want to chip it a lot. But for this truck, I'm gonna go very, very little. And depending on how the light hits it, it's gonna shine. It's gonna look like some paint got got chipped off here, all along the, the edges here, where the tires go, fender, and underneath. zoom in so I can show you a little bit so that's all chipped and uh, here I'm gonna do the side so look, look how it looks now and when I when I start doing this it already changes like the the feel or the texture it it starts to look metallic right it's just a bit of silver Scraping around along the edges here. Uh, 
and uh, that's what it looks like on the side a little bit more metallic and uh, if you see the bed here it's just blah but all you got to do is dry brush some silver make sure you don't have a lot of paint on your brush or else you're just making it silver you only want a little bit of paint on the brush Just pass it around, make it all like dented and scratched. Now I uh, did a lot of the silver parts on this piece, and now for the uh, for the wood pieces, the spikes and the ceram here and stuff, I'm gonna use brown. And uh, I wanted the spikes to be a different brown than than the brown I sprayed, so I'm happy that it is. And now I'm gonna do these spikes brown as well. It's gonna be hard to paint that, but uh, with the wires there and everything, maybe you should have painted them before putting the wire, but it came out okay. Now for this uh, metal piece here, I like to use yellow, uh, but that's too bright. So I'm gonna put some orange and it gives you like a Tonka kind of yellow, Tonka construction tractor kind of yellow. So just uh, maybe put one drop of orange. I put two there and it comes out pretty dark. But uh, yeah, one, one drop of orange in, in a bit of yellow is going gonna, gonna to be enough. So I'm going to put back a bit more yellow because it was too orange. And uh, with this color, you're probably going to have to put, I'd say, three to four coats because unless you have high quality paint uh, I don't so uh, yeah the yellow is gonna take a few coats here I think I'm gonna make this this piece of metal here yellow as well and the top here gonna make it yellow maybe uh, this umbrella on top of the train in the front here let's make that yellow too and uh, that's just the first coat. After a few coats, uh... oh, time for a snack. This is a cream of artichoke soup, I believe. Thanks to my lovely wife. She's the best. She sees me painting for hours and brings me snacks. Um, and after I had my snack and I'm good to go, I'm going to use some red here on these canisters and uh, these these bottles here, maybe. I like making canisters red and especially bottles it makes the opponent want to like aim at the bottle you know like when you're playing a video game doesn't matter what video game as soon as you see something red you know if you shoot it it's gonna explode so i'm gonna give some of the my opponents some targets and tell them you know aim for this you'll get double damage or something could be fun yeah, you see all these coffees and snacks I'm getting. This is this is a lot of work, guys. Um, don't think that just because the video took maybe 45 minutes to an hour, that that's how long it's going to take you. Uh, it's going to take you a lot longer than that. This is all cut and stuff, right? So be patient, enjoy the hobby, and uh, don't yeah, don't forget to eat and drink and, and uh, have fun while while doing it. Uh, for this turret on top here, I'm gonna go for maybe an army, army pattern, some camo. So uh, I'm just gonna use some different greens and browns here. Next time you go buy paint, if, if you want to do some camo, just have uh, maybe three different greens, three different browns. Uh, this was like a light green, and uh, I'm using different companies. I'm using this uh, brown mahogany from Air, model Air. But because it's airbrushing paint, it's like wet. And I think it works for this because it, it shapes itself. You know, you put a bit and it just shapes itself into some kind of pattern. I'm going to use some hunter green. This is like a darker green. And... Uh, 
and if you want you could put a bit of water if you want to make it liquid and it's going to go into crevices and shape in a different different manner i'm going to use this uh, shiny rust here to make these these gears here these steampunk gears a little bit more shiny than than the rest of the the front and maybe dry brush some on on onto here if you're a good painter you could go into detail into these little things but I just like dry brushing and using some silver just get rid of the excess silver and then dry brush on these these bottles here make them look like they're scratched and they're dented and uh, make it look like uh, you know maybe one more bullet's gonna make them explode this is going to be some silver on the canisters and I had a little bit of red left so I don't know maybe put some on these spikes here maybe they use that to, to hunt animals and only animals unless they're cannibals but uh, it makes it look a little bit more deadly now for this paneling here i think i'm gonna go with straight out wood i have the mahogany colors so let's try it out and what i really like about this model air mahogany is that it's the texture that it gives on the first coat it looks like wood texture and if you use your brush correctly you could get some kind of like wooden mahogany pattern without putting a second coat just put one coat and uh, you know, dry brush some of my leftover here on these sticks just to give it some texture oh wow the underneath looks really bad i hope uh, hope i never have to turn this one over during the game probably not uh, I put some mahogany on the stick here and um, I'm gonna just make this black I don't know why I primed it brown but I think it's gonna look better black so we just make it all black and uh, that looks pretty cool for the front did some silver on the black there same method as before the tires uh, way too clean but uh, let's go let's go dirty up some of this stuff here so with uh, with a bit of black I uh, dry brush some on the guns here that's gonna give it a little bit of dirt a little bit of texture and then basically whatever is silver you could dry brush some black on it it's gonna look a bit dirty and I'm going to use this uh, dry rust effect from uh, Army Painter. And we're going to start resting some areas. Maybe these holes here underneath the guns probably get rusted. Along some edges. Just make some lines going down. And Uh, for most of you that do follow me, you know I put too much rust. So try to limit yourself. I don't I don't know when to stop. I just keep putting. I don't know if that's a bad thing or but if you want it to be really rusty, just put as much as you want. And uh, I'm gonna use this darker brown rust just to change it up a bit, not so that it's all orange everywhere. Just have a few different rest types on your build uh, these are really subtle little things that you only really see if you look at a model closely or I'm gonna put a lot here on the top Make it look like uh, it rained 
and did some weird rust on it. Now the inside here, I'm not going to spend too much time in there. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to be open, but I mean, if you have just simple orange, you could use to rest some of the the back here. I'm going to put some orange on top. And uh, maybe here. This is a really quick quick job inside because I don't think I'll be opening that often and uh, my favorite brushed metal is going to be used on the yellow parts and it's you, you'll see how it changes completely the look of this this metal piece here so what you want to do is just flick your brush on the edges of whatever metal piece you have and it's going to come out looking like a damaged metal piece of armor. Uh, makes a huge difference. Put some in different areas of your build just to dirty it up as well. I like to use a brush that's kind of broken because it basically randomizes the strokes for you since the, the hairs are a little bit everywhere. And uh, I'm going to do this panel here. And you'll see how it transforms this weird looking yellow sheet into a really cool metallic sheet of protection or armor and uh, this is not the type of paint you want to dry brush you want to have quite a bit actually on your brush when you're doing this because uh, it looks good the more there is the, the, the better it looks especially when the light hits it it's like a shiny black and it does a nice, it looks like uh, a lot of the paint was rubbed off. Put some underneath the gun. And uh, I'm going to use some here on the edge of the satellite. Maybe on the edge here. And... Uh, Again, I couldn't uh, stop. I didn't know when to stop. I just shoved some, some dry brush a little bit everywhere of brushed metal and I did the top two here. And uh, that looks pretty dirty and rusted and looks like it's been through hell. And I'm gonna do the inside a little bit here too. Just in case I open this during a game or something. And uh, I'm going to do the edges of this umbrella here. Or parasol. Or... Uh, what is that called? It's not an umbrella. It's some kind of... I think a parasol is the right word. I don't know. You see how it completely changes the look. Just left that love that paint it's my favorite i'm gonna dry burst some on the canisters here on the gears and uh that looks pretty good again not a crazy build something anybody could do and uh the tires here are way too clean for this build so let's dirty them up with some brown and some water so just put water on your brush put some water next to your paint and mix in some brown with the water make it like a liquidy liquidy brown and uh, just go to town on your tires 
that's going to dirty them. That's a quick and easy way to do it. If you have more time, you could take your time and dirty them properly. But I find this, uh, this does the job pretty nicely. It dries nice and dirty. Now what's good about this is if there's too much, you could use your brush and remove some of the excess water. And, uh, and it's okay to go fast and spin the wheels and everything because even if the paint flies off it, it's it's gonna it's gonna look good. It's gonna make it look like you know the dirt flew off and went on the body and stuff. So it's fine. Maybe put some on purpose. Dirty up the back. Maybe some of the you know, dirt flying from the the tires. And I'm gonna put some in the front. Really easy way to dirty some tires. If you guys have a better method of getting the tires dirty, I'd like to hear in the comments. But uh, I think this one, this one's finished, and uh, you could put whatever car you want on the back, and that makes for a modular gun. You know, you could have uh, maybe a BFG in the back, giant cannon that probably can be used to shoot and also boost your speed at the same time. Uh, maybe put a flamethrower guy in the back, it's, uh, whatever you want, or, you know, Gaslands TV equipment van, get some of the uh, the footage that you need to get some fans um, now I forgot a few things here on this engine first I need to dirty up these these pipes here sticking out and I'm gonna use regular black for that and uh, let's do a ionized ionized uh, tip here so with some metallic purple and metallic blue I'm gonna just put uh, some purple and then with the blue make a little strip and uh, you don't have to wait till the purple dries to do this it's kind of cool that the blue blends a little bit with the purple and it gives it like that burnt metal look you could also use it at the tip of your guns So that it looks like uh, you know they've been shooting for a for a long time and uh, yeah tarnished the metal ionized I, I i feel like it ionized is the right word because it's ion right uh, and i painted the front ram here and um, this pipes looks pretty cool and i think uh, this this guy's pretty much done and uh, now for for the other guy check this out uh, if you've been watching this long you deserve this cool little tip here this is a watch a really old watch and you could go get these at jewelry stores or whatever and they have a gear system that is so cool looking and if you're doing a steampunk build uh, you should definitely use these and you could also make them actually work and look like pretty cool engine piece right so uh if you like that tip make sure to like and subscribe it really helps the channel and uh for the entries which i'm gonna show here for the month of february uh we got some really, really nice work guys here and um, don't forget if you don't win this month you could resubmit the same picture same car i mean you worked on it so uh, you should be able to re-enter it until you win but all of these are really nice uh, jobs and uh, i'm so kind of 
humbled and proud to see uh, you guys using my logo or the Gaslands TV logo on these things and the colors. Uh, really, really cool work. I really enjoy looking at these. But uh, for this month, the winner is Amanda Ferrari with this cool little sparkly car. Congrats. Uh, send me a message. And if you didn't win, again, guys, re-enter your picks for the month of March. And uh, if you do play and you're looking for stuff like gates or templates or dice, uh, maybe some 3D printed stuff like engines, rams, guns, uh, even like little pipes. Uh, you could buy containers that we sell that come with a bunch of stuff with it. And uh, you could also get like flamethrowers and missiles and stuff. It's all on our Etsy page, so go check it out. And uh, thanks for the support. Also, if you want to submit your car for the diecast racing, uh, just contact me or leave a comment. Uh, contact me on Facebook and uh, you could send in your car and I will race it against other people's cars on the diecast racing track.